In this tutorial we will train our robot to follow the black line and to run as fast as possible. This is a simple problem that can be solved using infrared sensor, general computer vision and classic control. But in this tutorial, as a sensor, we will use web camera, and as a control method, we will use reinforcement learning. By solving this problem using reinforcement learning, we can learn techniques that will be useful for more complicated problems. I have already described problem settings and how to set up environment in the previous tutorial. So, in this tutorial, we will mostly focus on the machine learning aspect. I will use code for explanation, so please download the zip file from the Google Drive and extract it to your home directory. We will solve this problem using two methods. The first method is using a PPO algorithm with multilayer perceptron network. As an observation, we will use center coordinates of line region in robot x direction velocity. As rewards, we will give a negative reward if robot loses the black line from its sight. A positive reward is given in reverse proportion to the distance between the center of the black line region and the center of the image. This encourages the robot to follow the black line. We also give a positive reward proportional to x direction velocity of the robot. This encourages the robot to run as fast as possible. A small positive reward is also given if the robot stays alive. This also encourages the robot not to lose sight of the black line. In the second method, we will use convolutional neural networks. So, instead of black line region center coordinates, we will use whole image for observation. Policy should learn to extract valuable features from the image and based on that features learn how to operate the robot. As in the first method, the robot velocity is used as well. Technically, the second method is much more challenging. In case of using images, an important thing is that we will not use RGB format. We will use grayscale. This is because we only have a black line on the white background, so other color information is not required. Excessive information will make training of the network more difficult. As for rewards, we will use the same rewards as with previous method. Now, let's see network composition. When we use multi-layer Parceptron architecture, networks are relatively simple. They consist of a flatten extractor, two hidden layers and an output layer. In the Stable Baselines 3 library, the flatten extractor layer is defined automatically when we set MLP policy. Then, we have two hidden layers with 32 perceptrons in each. In the final layer, in case of actor network, angular velocities of each joint are outputted. In case of critic network, action values are estimated. In both networks, as an activation function, exponential linear unit is used. This activation function pushes mean activations towards zero, which improves learning stability. And it keeps small negative values instead of cutting them to zero, helping gradient flow for neurons that would be ignored with rectified linear unit. In case of using image as an observation input, things are more complicated. The image is processed by convolutional neural network. The CNN consists of three structurally identical blocks but with different parameters. Each block consists of a convolution layer, output of which is normalized, then processed using rectified linear unit. The output of a rectified linear unit is further processed in the residual block. In this architecture, pooling layers are not used. This is because we are using strided convolutions. Strided convolutions mean that strides in the convolution layer are larger than 2. Advantages of strided convolutions is that they let the network learn how to downsample optimally instead of just fixed averaging or maxing. Also, pooling throws away information, whereas strided convolutions can keep important structure. 
residual blocks stabilize optimization and speed up convergence. Here, we will not go deep into theory, but this is because they turn a hard mapping problem into an easier residual correction problem and ensure gradients always have a direct path through the network. As defined in the YAM file, this whole network works as feature extractor for both actor and critic networks. Now let's run the training. I expect that the viewer has already installed Isaac Sim 5 and Isaac Lab. Also, I will use a virtual environment named Isaac Sim 5 Lab, but the name is not important. Please use whatever virtual environment you like. Copy the line tracer folder. Paste it into this directory. Also copy these two files. And paste them into this directory. Now, run your virtual environment. Move to the SB3 directory. Commands to run training and evaluation are written in this file. If you would like to do evaluation do not forget to move this logs folder here. To run the training with image input just copy it and paste this command. With RTX 4070 GPU, training will take about 5 hours. Let's see training metrics. These are the results for episode mean length and episode mean reward. Both are increasing throughout training. This means that the agent is surviving longer. Exactly what we want for a line tracer type robot. The stepwise jumps are normal. PPO often improves in bursts. Next, let's see approximate KL. This metrics measures how much the new policy deviates from the old one after each update. Generally, PPO aims to keep this value between 0.01 and 0.05 depending on an environment and implementation. In our case, KL rises throughout training, which indicates that learning rate is too high or clip range is too wide. So, we might to reduce it for more stable training. Another useful metric is clip fraction. It tells us how often PPO's clipping is being activated. In our case, the clip fraction quickly rises and stabilizes around 0.6 to 0.8. This is too high. Ideally, it should be in the 0.1 to 0.3 range. So, learning rate or clip range should be reduced. Here is explained variance plot. Explained variance is defined like this. V target is the true return estimate. In PPO this is typically the Monte Carlo return or bootstrapped generalized advantage estimation target. V pred is the critic's prediction for the value of the same states. Difference between V target and V pred is called residual error. How far off the critic's predictions are. Explained variance is one of the most useful indicators of whether critic is learning correctly. As intuitive interpretation, this ratio tells us how large the critic's error is compared to the inherent variation in the true returns. Then subtracting from one gives how much of that variation the critic can explain. Explained variance near one means the value network's predictions match the empirical returns very well. Here is entropy loss plot. This graph might be confusing because entropy loss is minus entropy term used in entropy loss. So, this graph shows that entropy is decreasing over training. It means that policy becomes more deterministic. 
This is also confirmed by the fact that standard deviation reduces over time. Also, it explains KL jumps we saw previously because a tiny change in means with tiny SDD produces big relative change.